There are five essential characteristics to making up cloud according to NIST. One is on-demand self-service. The ability to go to a website and say, I want this kind of service, whether it's a virtual machine or a piece of software or a development environment and get that on demand immediately. Second, broad network access from anywhere as long as you have a network. Resource pooling, this is the ability for all those public cloud providers to put all of us securely together in one environment and take advantage of the costs. Rapid elasticity, the ability to say, I want 50 servers now, and an hour later, I don't want those 50 servers, take them back, public cloud provider, and of course, don't charge me. And finally, speaking of charging me, that measured service that allows cloud providers to charge us for services we are using and to immediately stop charging us the moment we're done with those. So those are the five essential characteristics. So now we'll go on to the service models. Guys, everybody today is as a service. There are only three that are recognized by NIST, and those are infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service is very simple. I need a server. I need storage. I don't have any. Let me go to the cloud and rapidly get one. Examples of infrastructure as a service cloud providers, Amazon uh, Red Hat CloudForm, which is the new uh, open source model. Of course, Terramark, which I think you're going to hear a little bit later about as we talk about hybrid clouds. Software as a service, again, I think that's well understood by everybody. Perhaps the, um, the most um, interesting example of software as a service is, of course, Salesforce.com. Um, you know, we use Salesforce at GTSI, so all of you good people are in our Salesforce database. Um, we have all these uh, young people right out of college, right? And when we do a quote for you, that goes into your record in Salesforce. When you hopefully place orders with us, that goes into a record in Salesforce. It's one of the premier CRM systems out there, right? Well, we pay for that by the number of seats, the number of people every month that use that tool. So that's software as a service. There's lots of them out there. Um, Google Apps is one, uh, Microsoft Office 365, Salesforce. There are tons of small companies also that are springing up and having a lot of success in the public sector with software as a service. So one of my favorites, and uh, I was fortunate enough to serve with these folks on the Tech America Cloud 2 Commission, what is GCE. GCE implemented a DCAS compliant financial management system as software as a service for the Department of Labor. You can go out and Google it. Phenomenal success story for them and for the Department of Labor. Labor scrapped a 25 year old custom built financial management system to go to software as a service. And finally, platform as a service. Now, platform as a service, I think, is one of the most misunderstood um, cloud service models out there. Um, but really, this is for rapid application development, web services, and that kind of thing. Here's where the confusion in cloud, in my mind, reigns. And it's especially important from a security perspective for you all. You see, you can have, on the left side of the screen, let's say, a platform as a service cloud running on top of an infrastructure as a service cloud. And maybe you have written an application on top of that platform as a service that you are now going to offer to your customers as a software as a service. Where's the security holes in that? They're everywhere. And you as users need to understand that you need to look not just at the software as a service layer, but down at the platform as a service layer, and you need to understand the security concerns down at the infrastructure layer. Conversely, right, I could have an infrastructure as a service model on top of which I run a, a software as a service platform, and I wrote a piece of code for that. So let's take Sonian, which is a, a, a small company that we're working with a lot to do email archiving and e-discovery type work. It's offered software as a service on top of one of many infrastructure as a service clouds. Well, let's say I wrote a piece of software to enable me to back up not just email, but let's say files of a certain type of, 
whatever. I now need to understand as a user and as a provider of that service all the security pieces of all of those three. And I think this is the most confusing of all of these um, uh, cloud providers, right, is what you really get when you say, well, it's just software as a service. Well, are you running the infrastructure? Are you running it on a public infrastructure as a service cloud? In which case, I need to look at the security of them also. So we've gone through the five requirements, the essential characteristics, the three um, service models, and now we're going to look at the deployment models. All of those infrastructure, platform, and software as a service can be deployed in a private cloud or down in the lower right in a public cloud, which we talked about, or in some combination thereof, right? A community cloud, which is basically all the people of a given interest getting together and running their own cloud, or some kind of a hybrid cloud. So um, two weeks ago, I wrote the hybrid cloud case study and I was fortunate enough to interview a gentleman named Anil Carmel. If any of you know Anil from uh, Los Alamos National Lab, he built one of the first hybrid clouds in the US government for the Los Alamos National Lab. Um, they already had VMware. They already had some HP servers, right? They went to Terramark, who has a bunch of servers running VMware, and said, let's get together and present one cloud to our customers. And our customers will decide where their workloads need to reside, whether it's internal to the LANL firewall or whether it's in the Terramark cloud. But it's all one environment. 